Hey guys, this is Smart Bomb from Western New York Airsoft League. This is going to be my first video review of one of the camouflage uniforms in my collection. What I've got here is a 1929 Tello Mimetico pattern of Italian origin. And as the name suggests, it was created in 1929, which makes it one of the oldest and longest running commercial camo, or I, I guess I should say mass produced camouflage uniforms in existence. Uh, the pattern was originally created for shelter material uh, for Italian troops, and I, I believe the first operational use of it was in Ethiopia in a slightly different format or, or set of drawings, I should say. And it then went on to be used in World War II, both by it Italian troops and by German um, like Waffen SS and guys like that. That version was a little bit different. The coloring was gray with, uh, I believe, the brown and the mustard as well as opposed to the green. But it did look a little bit different than this version, which is a post-war version. Not 100% what type it is in terms of whether it's an infantry version or a paratroopers version or something like that. But it's likely probably from the 60s or 70s, maybe the 80s, since it's in such good condition. Um, but it, like I said, it wasn't really <clears throat> put into disuse until really the, the early 90s when the Italians began using a modified US M81 woodland pattern. So I'm going to start off with a jacket here and just run you through the basic features of it real quick to familiarize it and then move on to some of the more advanced stuff. Now what you can obviously see from the preceding footage is there's these three primary colors of this sort of lime green, this rust brown, and then this, it doesn't necessarily show up as well in this video, but it's almost a mustardy tan color. And it's interesting just because these colors are... A little light for what you would expect in a modern uniform which belies its age and uh, I guess that's something that was probably refined as time went on from the original gray to this more green color which as far as uh, most of its contemporaries were concerned was probably much better at camouflaging than uh, the solid color uniforms that most other nations were using but it's obviously been surpassed um, both in complexity and color matching to the environment by more modern patterns. Um, what you'll see here is up by the collar, which is interesting. There's no star of Savoy on the, the tip of the collar like you see on most Italian uniforms. But then you've got this front closure of five, um, I take that back, six buttons, which is interesting because they're actually snaps as opposed to the typical what you see on uniforms of a uh, button and eyelet set up like on M81 uniforms. Um, but it's there's no, no real storm flap or anything like that. It's not a, a double closure in terms of snaps and zipper, but it seems like it would be you know fairly effective for what most guys in the field need it to do. Then what you got is these two... And that, this one's a little harder to see. So I'll flatten it out. But two uh, chest pockets. And there's a, a regulation U.S. quarter right there to give you a sense of scale. Um, these are the only pockets on the jacket, which, again, is unusual given more modern uniforms. But they are quite big, so I'm, I'm sure the guys that wore these could stuff a, a majority of whatever they needed to into them. Um... Moving on, some of the other interesting features are you see this elasticized waist, which is unusual again for um, a, a jacket, at least in modern uniforms, but it obviously keeps it close to the, the wearer's waist and, you know, attempts to keep stuff out at least. You'll notice, however, that the cuffs are not elasticized. Um, fully at least 
and they've only got this partial assassination, I guess would be the word, which, you know, is, isn't bad. I think it's probably more of a look thing um, to make them not appear so scrunched. But, again, it, I'm sure it keeps stuff out fairly decently. <clears throat> Moving on, it's, a little, again, a little hard to see. But I'll put this quarter back in here. These are actually padded elbow pads which are again quite sizable and I'm not a hundred percent sure what is actually inside of them but it feels like some sort of foam which obviously you know if you, you hit your elbow on a rock isn't going to help too much but against smaller stuff branches small pebbles things like that I'm sure it'd be more than effective lastly what we've got is an interesting feature again is let me back up a little bit is a hood which is detachable if we look at the back here it's kind of hard to see but it's got these button and eyelet closures all along the, the back of it so it can be removed if the wearer so chooses but it can also be closed up in the front again with two button and eyelet fasteners then has these drawstrings right here and right here to, to cinch it up it's an interesting feature you don't typically see hoods on modern uniforms um, and it, it's it's a cool feature uh, I'm not sure how often it was really used except perhaps on guard duty when you're outside one thing about it that I'm not 100% sure on is there's an eyelet on the top where a button could go and I'm not sure why it's there because it doesn't appear to be any spot where there was a button on the back where you would you know perhaps button it down to keep it from flapping around but you know that's that's one of those things that I'm sure a more experienced person would probably know other than that that's pretty much the jacket the only other thing I forgot to mention are these two epaulets Again, pretty standard, you know, they'd, they'd fit a, a beret or something like that, but they're by no, no means anything unusual. That's pretty much the jacket. I'm going to talk about the pants in a minute. Um, I just have to set them down, but 